what was it like? Like, so from the moment you realized this was going on <laughs> and, you know, and the virus was disrupting everything, mm -hmm. what was your, you know, what was your process? Like emotionally, intellectually, like what did you go through from, yeah. from that moment to the time, like to where we are now? Like what's it been? Yeah. So, uh, basically everything started like in China. So we have an event in China as well. And we were told that uh, our event in China was going to be canceled. Um, so that was the first step of, mm, okay, something is getting a little bit strange around there. Um, and so then the French government decided to reduce um, meetings to 5,000 people. And we were like, okay, so this is going to hit us. And we decided to think of options and how we could handle a crowd of 5,000 people if it was still um, being held that way. Um, and also the virtualization of um, the conferences or um, being able to attend online and stuff like that, because we still had the physical event going on. And then it reduced to a thousand and then a hundred people and then 50 and we were like, okay. <laughs> and now it's like two, that. right? This <laughs> is not going to work. <laughs> Um, but, but then I had, I had already tested it. It was like in, in a, it was a short, short thing. So basically to a 5,000 to 50 people, it took the state probably two weeks to decide that. So during that actually two weeks, um, I had gathered a bunch of platforms that we could probably use and I was testing them. Um, and the thing is when we actually started, it was like, oh, but we've been working with a lot of different uh, virtual or meeting or collaboration uh, solutions. And it, it, we just felt like, yeah, we could just try all of them and, and see how it goes. But the thing is, after a week, I felt like, no, this is not going to work if I, if I just go ahead and, and check everything that we already know, because it's not, it's not the same target. Their uh, target as a company is going to people that are already into uh, digitalization of their companies, their B2B, and they're mainly uh, produced to uh, have meetings or collaborate through the world, which is not our target audience. Our audience is um, basically B2B uh, companies, uh, users that need a solution, and we have providers on the site. So people who are going to access the platform uh, may not actually have headsets or uh, any devices in their hands, right? So, and we also have a lot of decision makers coming to Laval. And we all know that even if we are geeks and have the software as all the hardware as at home, they actually don't. Yeah. Uh, so, and they don't want to spend the time to figure it out either, right? Exactly. It has to be something really simple. And so, I started defining the target and what they would have um, inside their home. And so I tested another few bunch of platforms and you get a lot of surprise actually, but yeah, um, this is how it went first. It was like, okay, strike up the moment. Oh, test everything. <laughs> and then it's like, well, okay, no, uh, define really how they have, how they can access it. Uh, we know that internet is going to be a little bit complicated because everybody is going to be at home. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was like really figuring out how to have people there. And we know that we would have loved to have a solution that would have all included, like 2D, VR, etc. But today, uh, those platforms are basically not ready. Um, and uh, even for the ones that are ready, it doesn't support all the different softwares or hardwares. Um, and you're very limited in terms of uh, interaction if you actually do have both. Um, and so we went for a solution that is developing their VR side. So but I think for Q3 or Q4 this year, they will have the VR part happening. Uh, but right now they're working on the 2D. So the development for us is the other side. 
Uh, so they're starting with the, the, the bigger market and then exactly. going down to the small market, the emerging market, which is VR. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And so, so it's, it's and, and so, um, you know, cause there's, I know there was a lot of pressure um, externally and I don't know about internally, like, oh, we could do the whole thing in VR. Cause you know, all the, the, you know, the VR fanatics are like, oh, this is our moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, did you get caught up in that? And how quickly, if so, how quickly did you realize that that just wasn't feasible? Um, so as I said, I, w I was testing for two weeks and then um, th there is this group called XR Crowd that you know, uh, yep. and um, they decided to help in saving South by Southwest by doing the online um, conferences in VR or for Zoom and stuff like that. And so I jumped in and I said, listen, I've already worked on a bunch of platforms. Let me share the document so you can try them as well. And since then we have been doing a lot of testing and this is how also you get very excited because they're all very enthusiastic about the various VR platforms that they have. And let's not forget this is a crowd. So they're definitely into the technology. Um, and what happened is after like a few testing, uh, I, I did say to Andrea, listen, um, it's cool testing the platforms and everything, but uh, my purpose and the purpose for even creators right now is not to actually go full VR because we know that the audience that we have might not have the headset and they're confined at home. So even if they had the headset at work, it's probably given to the developers but because they keep working. So they need the yeah. headsets. And so they will not have the headset. So it's good to see platforms with both access. Um, and so we defined um, specifications for the meetings and depending on who is coming and who uh, and what they're willing to try we go ahead with that. Did you, did you participate in the HTC Vive developer conference, which they did in, in Engage by any chance? No, I didn't. Okay. I, I was curious because like, I think that all the presenters were in VR mm -hmm. um, and then you could either watch it in VR or on YouTube. And my experience was it was better to watch on YouTube, frankly, like the VR stuff <laughs> was kind of after a while, I was like, okay, this is stupid. I'm just going to watch it on YouTube. And um, and so, so when you're, when you made your decision process of what to do, are you, you know, like, like, I guess, first of all, why not just do it in zoom or one of the other platforms that everybody else seems to be using, you know, to pull people together and why go with a, why go with VR at all? Like, I guess that's my question. Uh, well, we are level virtual. If we don't do something virtual, it, it makes no sense. <laughs> I get, I totally um, get that. Yeah, and, and also um, the interaction is not the same uh, because our event, the, well, the best part of going to event is networking and seeing people. And even if you go to the conferences, you really need to go and be able to meet people on one-to-one -one meetings or just chat and uh, having a drink, yeah. even if it's a virtual drink, like just meeting people. That's why we go to events. We go to check what is happening and stuff like that. And also, um, the, so the, yeah, the, the, the people coming and the audience, as I said, is B2B users and uh, providers. The thing is, uh, providers might have everything, the users absolutely not. So the point is to feel like they can actually meet for the computer. Of course, what we are going to do is uh, stream from the conferences anyway, from uh, Verabella, uh, so we're using Verabella, to Outspace through YouTube. So you will be able to actually get out of your headset or get out of your computer uh, in the virtual world and just go on YouTube if you're just not feeling like it and just need the noise in the background and listen to the conferences and not just be there and chatting with people. Um, but you could still go in anytime and say, listen, we have this app, Love Our Virtual app, where you can actually schedule meetings with people, go inside the world, uh, and just go and meet the people inside the team suite, for example, and have a one-to-one -one meeting. Uh, if you want to check with the sponsors, they will have areas, uh, there's exhibitors, there's uh, going to be a, a lot of different things. And we're going to do the parties inside of uh, Verabella. We're also going to do the parties on Outspace for the people that want to stay in VR. 
And um, so we're trying to combine everything that is possible and also to keep this thing of meeting people. Because the yeah. thing is, today we're confined, but business is still going on. And when everybody is going to go out of confinement and business has to like start again, because like we know that normally summer, like July and August is pretty slow in terms of business. But if we all get out, I mean, everybody's going to start working in July, um, June, July, and everything is going to start maybe August and September. So there's a lot of things that is going to happen and we, we must not um, stop this. And it's harder probably today to reach out to someone just by announcing, listen, I'm doing this. Uh, I would like to catch up and let's do a Zoom. It would work for a few people, but most of the other ones, they have the kids, they have everything going on and they don't even know if they'll be there in a few months because like yeah. everything is on hold right now. Yeah. And, and so with the Verbella, the, the, the platform that you're using, will people in VR be able to interact with people that are not in VR or you're going to have the VR people kind of segregated in alt space and then the non VR people um, in this other space or is there a way to cross pollinate them yet? Um, so you can actually access Verbella in VR. Uh, the thing is, it is not super interactive for the moment. It's still in beta. Um, and so you can, you can try and do it, but you would probably have your arms going all around. <laughs> um, Sometimes I'm like that at a convention. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's you, you know, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, for the moment it will be people inside of Verbella and people in an aisle space. Okay, cool. And then the, the, the event that I'm moderating, is that, are we, is everybody going to be in VR? Or like the presenters going to be presenting from VR with avatars or what's your vision for that? So, um, as it's the first and we're not sure that how many people are going to come, we, we know that we normally have 20,000 people coming at the physical event. Uh, we don't know how many will go online. Maybe it will be less, maybe it will be more. We just really don't know. Um, and uh, so to kind of show that everything will stay stable, because I think uh, we're going to have a test with a lot of people, but we did a thousand or twenty thousand. So um, we decided that we would be. Um, having the presenters inside of Verabella doing a presentation, but before and have everybody in the conference prior so that in case there's anything happening, I don't know, because there can be speculations happening. Uh, or let's say they get ill and they can't really go um, on, on, on the internet and do the presentation. So we are going to have everything recorded prior to the event and we're going to try to alternate as well because we know that when we are, you're in France because you come to the event, you're on one time zone, but a lot of the speakers are from all yeah. around the world. So we try to keep them inside of the schedule with a time zone that are good for them. But then again, we have a lot of people and depending on the topic, it gets very complicated. So also we're going to try to alternate with people being on stage live in Verabella or having recorded stuff. Okay, so you, so really it's just a big, which it has to be, it's just a big experiment. You're gonna try a yeah. different bunch of different modalities <laughs> and then see what works and, and, yeah. and repair and reiterate and go again. Yeah, yeah, cool, awesome. Well, it's a brave, like you guys are, like I can't think of a better conference <laughs> to be like put in this position, if you think about it, like cause all kinds of innovations come out of this type of disruption, right? I mean, there have been people talking about the, you know, the, the Renaissance came out of the plague. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and, and I don't think this is that bad or this big, but you know, it's gonna be fascinating to see what you guys can prove up as far as like, what's, an, what's the conference of the future look like? Because a lot of people are thinking we're not gonna go back um, to the old normal. What, what's your personal view on that? Um, well, the thing is, um... I guess, first of all, is that we are going to be confined more than 
um, the disease is here. Uh, everybody is going to get deconfined stages by stages here anyway. I don't know how it's in the other countries, but um, it's definitely going to be very different. Uh, I guess uh, everybody is going to be a little bit more careful on the health issues. Um, and also here, everybody is impacted. Like what work used to be for health definitely is not the same now uh, and probably will change a little bit in the future. Um, why not have like virtual hotels and that? Because people just can't, like they can't move. So there's definitely things that will happen in terms of normal life. I don't, sh I don't know if it's going to be good or bad or if it's going to be like in science fiction's kind of movies where everybody's going to have like, like let's say probably a town that is very nice. Let's say probably Laval, just like virtualize everything in Laval, have like a, a Laval online. And if you want to go on a holiday to Laval, you just book a hotel in the virtual world and stay there. And probably technology is going to change and we're probably going to have updates on, on, I don't know, headsets or stuff like that, which would be more accessible. People would be able to do it because like all the big companies now, I don't know if you had that, but like, I guess people at home are very bored. So I had like probably three or five calls from the different insurance companies saying, oh, listen, we are home too. And we would like to have this and that. So these type of companies, they know that if the peop they don't have to pay people to be in a building, that means they pay building fees and probably more and more to kind of working. So it will change. I don't know how fast it will change, but it's going to be different. Yeah. What's the biggest, last question, what's the biggest opportunity that you see coming out of this for organizations like yours running conferences and meetings like that's that's really what you guys do right yeah uh, oh, to be honest for us it will not change a lot because we were already working from home a lot and you know just like uh like me you travel a lot so you're definitely not in the new technologies to have meetings um and to see our conferences because even then we still look to uh, at Mars or stuff like that from our computers or from the different headsets. We're already used to that. Um, but I believe that it, it will probably impact a lot on how things are done. I believe that interaction inside of VR is going to go to another step um, so that you feel um, more like if you were really going to a conferences. Um, I mean, if you go to engage, you can fist bump people and you feel it. If you go to or something else will shake. And I believe that probably not like having a full Tesla suit or something, but things yeah. are, coming, are, are going to come out so that you really feel like you're going to an event and not just be there and sitting and watching. Because I don't know if you try, but in VR, if you stay inside and you watch a conference for an hour or two, you just like get out of there and you're tired or you get yeah. a little bit dizzy. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this kind of stuff will have to change and, and, and believe they're already working on this kind of thing. It's, it's really interesting. So I've been you know, doing a lot of exercise in VR yeah. now because the gym's closed, right? And so yeah. you know, and I wear a Quest, which is probably the least comfortable of the headsets that are out there. <laughs> um, and when I'm playing, I don't notice it. But when I was sitting there in the developers conference, I was like, get this thing off my face it's killing me and so I think the boredom that you talk about of just sitting there and watching a presenter and a PowerPoint slide in VR it's like why am I suffering through this but but the little side chats the the two-person three-person conversations that presence is really powerful and so it'll be good and, you know, and I've always said I've been saying for a long time is like VR needs to find a problem to solve for it to take off yeah. Well, now we've got a problem <laughs> and the problem <laughs> is we're all disconnected. We're locked in our homes and we can't be with each other and we crave presence as humans. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe this is the moment, you know, that VR takes off. So, yeah. um, and if so, you're going to be on the forefront of it, which is awesome. <laughs> but I have to say that um, I used to play Beat Saber a little bit and, and I can't really go outside right now. So I've, I've been playing a lot of Beat Saber. <laughs> Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I think it, it's a good thing like to accept. and I think probably this is something that will also help a lot people are confined at home they can't go out running or do some different sports or 
having the yoga classes, but you can actually have it on your headset. So I know. it's probably another option as well to think of isolation and how people can escape through it, through the VR headsets. Yeah, cool. <laughs> thanks for um, thanks for taking some time to chat. I really appreciate it, and um, and I look forward to you. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you in person someday, and actually being allowed to give hugs again. I'm like, I'm I'm in this hug deficit mode, and it's killing me. So. Cat. <laughs> uh, I need a cat. We have a cat, but the cat doesn't like to hug. Like the cat runs away from me every time I go near it. So. Um, cool. Well, I will, um, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to play with you guys and to stay along with what's going on and, and to be involved and, um, and, uh, yeah, and look forward, watch the show, um, Yay. Friday night. It'll be the, uh, the inaugural, um, version of, it's called the being virtual show. Yeah. I saw that. And, um, and it's really going to talk about this movement from, you know, the old paradigm to the new paradigm, which is now we're being forced to become virtual and it was happening slowly and it's accelerating. And what does yeah. that mean um, yeah. to all of us? And how do we stay human through the whole yeah. thing? And when you see that we could actually do it, like, I mean, preparing something like that would probably take ages. And this is why it was so slow, but like our event was in a few weeks and we had everything prepared physically for it. So you had to shift in like a little few weeks of time and have everything done. This is something that would probably took us like a, probably a few months if we really had to do it. Like if you wanted perfect, if you wanted this and that. Yeah. Um, but doing it this fast allows us also to be in and checking all the different stuff. It allows us to be really like testing it and, and I hope that everybody behind will be able to take the experience and feel like, oh, listen, we tried, we did a lot of mistakes, here they are. <laughs> but yeah. here's the positive thing as well. Um, and, and go ahead, like if you need anything, if you need help, if you need the platform and everything, because we're going to have one of our own. Um, and so we can definitely give access to it. Like if people want to do conferences inside, let's go ahead and do it. I mean, there's so many things to do right now, so definitely. Yeah, well, cool. Wait. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays <laughs> out. And, and um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks so much for joining. Anything I can do to help you guys at all? Uh, right now, it's just finalizing uh, the schedules and stuff like that, uh, validating the last little bit of stuff and keep going. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, I'm here if you need me. I've got plenty of time on my hands. Um, okay. though I am busy, I'm like creating a lot of new content. So that's really exciting. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, yeah. Same thing. I mean, even if I'm really busy with the event and I, I told you now I'm, I'm barely sleeping anymore, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, the creativity and being inside also, as well, it, it makes you do a lot of different things. So I believe we have like various stuff to all share together and, and, and there's plenty of things happening right now that will be helping for the future and appearing in a few months then it's going to be pretty cool yeah cool awesome well keep me posted um be yeah. safe be well have fun get some Thank sun you. and um <laughs> and we'll see you uh we'll see you online and i'll see yeah. you i guess at the conference yes. in in the virtual world exactly all right <laughs> okay bye thanks bye-bye